Hi everyone, you are in the case study regarding a disease called diabetes mellitus type 1 or DM type 1, which is the most common diseases found among people around the world. Let's see how biochemistry principles underlie this disease. Let's start with the definition of DM, which is one of the most frequent metabolic diseases characterized by high level of blood glucose, so-called hyperglycemia, for a long period of time. This disease is directly involved in one of the hormones regulating blood glucose level, known as insulin. Here is the case that a 26 years old female patient arrived at the hospital unconsciously. She had been diagnosed with diabetes mellitus since she was 12 years old, and she is every day injects insulin subcutaneously. Her blood pressure was low with high pulse rate. Her respiration a deep, rapid, and with a stone smell. Laboratory confirms the presence of ketones in her urine, high serum glucose, and low blood pH. Diabetic ketoacidosis was confirmed and treated before discharge her to her. There are three types of DM characterized by their primitive causes. DM type 1 is caused by the failure of the pancreas to produce insulin. This is due to the autoimmune disease in which the autoantibodies attack the beta cells of the pancreas. This damage causes inability of the pancreas to produce and release insulin upon high blood glucose activation. The final result is that there is no insulin at all in the bloodstream. This DM type is known as insulin-dependent DM or juvenile DM since the onset of this type is found in a very young age. Unlike DM type 1, the DM type 2 is caused by inability of the target cells of insulin to properly respond to the action of the insulin especially the uptake of the glucose from the blood in adipocyte and skeleton muscle cells. This DM type is known as insulin-independent DM or adult onset DM since the onset of this type is found in a middle adulthood. DM type 2 is always led by insulin resistance where a little higher blood glucose level is maintained in the fasting blood. Obesity is a common factor of insulin resistance. The last one is gestational DM, which is a conditional DM emerging during pregnancy. It is similar to DM type 2 as the sensitivities of the insulin receptor is low during the pregnancy. The hyperglycemia is normally back to normal after child delivery. It is related that the mothers who experience the gestational DM are prone to have DM type 2 in the late life. However, DM type 1 and type 2 are mostly highlighted as the gestational DM is reversible, while both of time are chronically progressive, if not well controlled. In this case study, you will learn DM type 1 with a little touch with DM type 2 in certain circumstances. As we all know, insulin control blood glucose by reducing it. When the blood glucose is high above normal, it triggers the secretion of insulin from the pancreas to the target cell like skeletal muscle cells and adipocytes. Upon binding to the receptor on the cell surface, the expression of the glucose transporter known as 
good for is enhance on the membrane of those cells to massively uptake the glucose from the bloodstream into the cells. This feature results in lowering the blood glucose. The failure to respond upon the binding resulted from the absence of insulin for the M type 1 or resistance to respond to insulin from the M type 2 directly affect high blood glucose or hyperglycemia. It is well known that insulin and glucagon are the counterpart molecules to balance energy metabolism. Due to the absence of insulin, most of the phenotypes are of the effect of glucagon action. In addition to a high blood glucose, the glucagon intensifies the glucose by activation of glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, which worsen the hyperglycemia. In addition, the glucagon enhances lipolysis and ketogenesis to produce ketone bodies, including acetone, acetoacetate, and 3 hydroxybutyrate. Accumulatively, the ketone bodies lead to the drop of blood pH due to acidity of those compounds and finally causes ketoacidosis, recognized as diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. The DKA patients present their exhalation with acetolite smell due to the high ketone bodies in their bloodstream. However, the M type 2 do not show DKA due to the presence of insulin to counterpart the glucagon effect. In addition to high blood in both of the M type 1 and the M type 2, the level of blood VLDL and triglyceride are markedly high due to the high influx of glucose into hepatocyte via GRUT2 and the glucose in fact activates fatty acid and cholesterol biosynthesis. Finally, VLDL and triglyceride are produced from the liver and transported into the bloodstream. In the case of DKA, one of the mechanisms from the body to compensate this imbalance is increasing respiratory rate and the heart rate to get rid of the proton from the ketone bodies. To efficiently treat the M type 1, insulin injection is the most standard goal. Subcutaneously injected, the appropriate amount of insulin must be considered due to the life-threatening consequence in case of inappropriate amount applied. Inadequate amount of insulin or without injection, unconsciousness might occur due to the high level of ketone bodies as well as acidemia known as DKA. Likewise, the unconsciousness might also occur in the case that excessive amount of insulin is a problem due to the sharp drop of blood glucose to a critically low blood glucose. In addition to high blood glucose, hemoglobin A1c or HbA1c is another biomarker monitoring in both types of DMs. It reflects how well the patient can control their blood glucose level within the past three months. Hemoglobin A1c is the end product of glycosylation of the high glucose with hemoglobin in the red blood cells. A well-controlled person could present low degree of the hemoglobin A1c level while high degree is found in the uncontrolled individuals.